It's such a great, great pleasure to welcome you here today to this celebration of Nancy Johnson and her work and also the opening of our new version of the Creative Writing Library, which holds the Nancy Johnson collection of 20th century poetry and Russian literature. This title is such a fabulous title, and it refers to the National Zoo and the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. But this one, she, the locale of this poem, she's sort of meditating on the Ammonite, but the locale is at the DMV. <laughs> it's called Ammonite, hematized Morocco. The Ammonite appears third hour in line at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. After I've exhausted all the words about rain and it's morning again. I give a wide berth to the woman beside me. Everyone coughs up the past as it becomes necessary. Clamoring through any ocean 170 million years ago, the Ammonite constructed its living chamber, one secretion after the next. Another ho-hum motel a lover's question. Have you come to terms with how much absence? The air in DC allows no room for storage. This is city as hologram, nowhere to ground, central points vanishing. The same way the courtyard of every French restaurant is comfortable. The snail filled its chambers with air to propel itself and the woman smiles into the Polaroid, registering herself into the decade. Those who pursue us find another city, hair knotted with sweat, phone lines thick with distance. At this juncture, it's the juncture we worry about. That and mobility is no longer its own reward. When Derves came in the next morning, Arthur was sitting up in bed, smiling. He said, hi, honey, I'm back. She looked at him. I'm back. I woke up. She didn't start to cry. She didn't run to his side and embrace him, cover him with kisses, tell him how much she missed him. She stood in the greenish light of his hospital room, looking at him, at his six-week growth of beard, thinking he should get a shave. It's true, Arthur said, I know what happened. The doctor will confirm it. I woke up, I know where I am and what's going on. I'm not saying I believe it all. It's going to take a while to sink in, but the important thing is that I'm back. He was making sense. He wasn't talking about living in DC in 1990 or about farts or about Muhammad Ali. He wasn't speaking in non sequiturs or laughing at jokes where the punchline was in his head. He wasn't telling Amy to take dictation about the case involving the sushi workers, but he was still speaking in that voice, what Derves thought of as the head injury voice. It was a tone higher than his normal speaking voice and phlegmy, as if he had a perpetual blob of mucus stuck in his throat, and it was flat, without much effect. 